6 o'clock Friday and Saturday, ABC. Coming up in half an hour on TV TV, it's a matter of trust as 60 Minutes puts the media on trial and we go along for the ride. Fear and loathing in the family home with the mirth-making mummies. And Doctor Who travels back in time to his own beginnings. Plus, we get a taste of the world's wildest continent and we bring you the latest TV news. That's tonight at 6.30. Dad! And the king said, Oh, and what colour is the hair of my perfectly perfect person? And Max said, The hair of your perfectly perfect person is... What colour is your hair? That's what Max said! Clever, Max. The under fives will love Shari and Lamb Chop, but like old episodes of My Three Sons, its true value is in making adults feel safe in the knowledge that some things just never change. TV TV reports that there is behind the scenes drama in the Melbourne ABC drama unit. The shooting schedule of The Damnation of Harvey McHugh has been, quote, extended. The original producer, Denny Lawrence, has departed and has been replaced by Sue Masters, who will oversee the reshooting of some episodes. The Damnation of Harvey McHugh is a 13-part series which features newcomer Aaron Blaby as a working-class youth trying to get ahead in the public service. It is slated for airing next year. Meanwhile, Ten is running to difficulties with its new Sunday night music show, Take 40 TV. The premiere of Eden Gahar's one-hour program has been postponed because negotiations with Australian record companies have broken down over the issue of pay for play. However, all parties are keen for the show to go ahead and its premiere is now scheduled for Sunday week. And while on the subject of uh, scheduling premieres, Nine is finally confirmed 8 o'clock on the night of Wednesday, November 24 for the debut of Looking Good. Five episodes will be screened this year before the network decides whether to go ahead with the series in 94. In Hollywood, three vintage crime fighters have teamed up to return to TV. The Avengers' Patrick McNee, the man from Uncle's Robert Vaughan and Kung Fu's David Carradine got together for an episode of Carradine's new series, Kung Fu, The Legend Continues. More reports later in the show. Still to come on TV TV, from rags to riches, the success story behind Australia's largest regional network. What's the one thing we all hate on television? Universal turn off, flick over, zap by, mute, you'd rather deworm the dog than bother watching. No matter who you vote for, the party political broadcast is a bore. But like an annoying pop song, given time and distance, the party political broadcast becomes a fascinating window to the past. This is a half hour program that BBC Two ran recently. I suspect it might have been a pilot for a series that never got approved, but the half hour sampler was certainly good enough to put to air. Good evening. This is our television operations room. Throughout the campaign, the leaders of the Labour Party will be speaking directly from here. Well, uh, this so you've been told, is the Labour Party's election campaign operations room. Well, in fact, it's a studio at the BBC. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if everything had just stayed quaint and dinky like that? But of course, once the politicians saw how successfully a good TV campaign could be at selling soap and soft drink, they quickly forgot the speeches and started salivating after slogans. Since Mr Wilson came to power, this is what he's done to your pound. Going at the same rate, 1971 would be like this. 14 and 3. 1972, 13 and a penny. 1973, 12 shillings. 1974, 11 shillings. 1975, 10 shillings. The 10 bob pound. Only your vote can stop him. The weird thing to me is how after an election, you always get the ad guys talking about how clever they were at pulling our purse strings or identifying that which really concerned us or softening or toughening the image. We let them get away with it every time, and then we sit around and applaud. We did two things. One is we made, we made them into commercials, styles of commercials, where you had slogans and you had captions and you had quick cutting and all the techniques that, that, um, that television advertising uses. And secondly, we cut the length down from 10 minutes to 5 minutes because we, we recognised that 10 minutes was an incredibly boring length of time, whereas 5 minutes was ample in which to get across a message. That was Sir Tim Bell, Conservative Media Advisor, responsible for creating this breathless paragon of beauty and light. But this is the first time in our history that a woman could, after Thursday, be holding the highest political office in our national life. 
It's never happened before. And I know that despite all the changes in our society, there are some who still feel a little bit uncertain about it. I also know there are others who would welcome it. Look, I could go on, I suppose, but the only thing more boring on TV than a party political broadcast is someone sanctimoniously going on about how bad they are. Like you don't know that? Come on, show us the funny bits. Look, this isn't the first of the Python repeats, it's a party political, so I'll give you five seconds to switch over. OK, well, for anyone left, here's some Alliance propaganda. Or with me doing it, impropaganda. A lot of potential in this idea. Politics today occurs somewhere else. And then we watch the sideshow on the box and read the reviews in the paper if we have time. A fully blown history of the relationship between politicians and television is nothing less I'm than the history of our time. Mr. and Mrs. Attlee, and of course we are talking about the general election. Yeah, I think there's a good deal, you know, to the old public meeting. After all, a candidate likes to see his audience. That's one of the troubles of television, you don't. And I think the electors like to see their candidate. And after all, too, you can't heckle in television while you can at an election meeting. I had an extremely good one late the other night. Since its introduction almost five years ago, aggregation has meant that viewers in regional Australia have access to three commercial stations as well as the ABC. Some sections of the TV industry argued that it would not be financially viable. But as Don Willisey reports, for one regional network, sharing the TV spoils with viewers has been anything but disastrous. The Prime Television Network is spread throughout rural Victoria and New South Wales. Valued at more than $110 million, it operates from 14 stations. By far the biggest of Australia's aggregation networks, Prime last year turned over $86 million, making a profit of $7.5 million. It's all looking successful now, but the Prime's chairman, Paul Ray Coming up in half an hour, Tosh talks to TV TV as we celebrate the Bill's 500th episode. A legend of the silver screen comes clean about Hollywood. And the ratings war gives way to the real war, as television remembers. We'll also talk to one of Australia's best-known TV cops, Gerard Kennedy, plus the latest TV news tonight at 6.30.